Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel. Today we are here with RBS Marine from Burdham near Chichester to have a look at this Rodman 1290 Evolution. So a boat built in Spain, very much with a, a seagoing capability based on the Spanish pilot boats that Rodman built years ago. So she is very much a functioning, practical, go anywhere type of vessel. And you can see that by the way that the deck sweeps up and then curves in at the bow. Decent size bathing platform so you can stick your tender or your toys or your paddle boards, whatever you like on here. And then a really purposeful sea gate here. Like so, if I take a step back without falling in, there you go. And again, because it's a, a, it's a working boat to a certain extent, it's got a access underneath to allow the water to flood out. Open cockpit layout, so you can really pretty much choose to do in here whatever takes your fancy. Big engine bay down there, and then there's two storage lockers on either side down there, and as you can see, folding, folding seats as well. This one is out. We'll have a look at the engines on the way back. But so nice to see inboard cleats and then really nice fair leads to keep the GRP from scuffing. And again, fishing history, you can see the two rod holders in there as well. We'll take a quick turn around the deck before the rain hits us. And you'll notice that the deck runs up. So that I, the logic here is if you take a wave, it runs all the way back out, out the back door and out the self drainers. So a quick peek down here, see what we've got. Oh, outboard gas bottle locker. That's really neat because he's got gas cooking on board. Big wide decks. They've upgraded the, the pulpit and the push pit guard rails on the later versions to slightly thicker stainless. And again, massive, great big molded side windows. Walk up the forward peak here. There's the superstructure. And you can see here there's lots and lots of glazing, throwing light into the fore cabin. Very purposeful dolphin nose bow here as well. And again, the size of these guardrails, absolutely massive. Foot foot switches for the anchor winch, anchor roller, and then in here is the usual anchor locker. Plenty of chain and a bit of fender space. Great place to dive off, I should think, if you're anchored, trying to avoid the chain. Quick turn around and you can see how purposeful and practical that boat is. We'll pop down the other deck, although I'm pretty confident it's the same. Nice big single piece windscreen. Obviously, you can see this one's the flybridge version. You can get it without the flybridge if you wanted. Side door, so you can get quick access if you're the skipper, out to the side cleat, and obviously then the pontoon. And a nice roll down the side decks before we take a turn inside. Now obviously you can see access up to the flybridge over there, and you can see these big double doors are open. At the moment, they're sliding over to the uh, port side. You can slide them over to the starboard side if you wanted to. The idea being there, if you're cooking, because your galley is here, you're not getting the wind blowing in and knocking the gas over. You'll also notice under the steps here, there's a storage locker under here. But this can be, I think at the moment it's a sink, if I'm right. Yeah, there you go, a little sink, a little ice box. But that could be converted into a barbecue if you wanted, if you were ordering the boat yourself. Again, internally, really light and bright. They've got the light teak in here at the moment, but there are other options for wood if you prefer something a bit darker. And it's so nice, I love this. Having had boat with carpet, it's really annoying when you, you walk in from the teak outside into the inside and you have to take your shoes off because of what you've got carpet. Much more practical, certainly in the saloon area to have the wood. Pretty standard layout here with the uh, C-shaped seating, storage underneath all the seats, and as you can probably tell, this is a high-low table, which gives you the ability to fold it out, gain a bit more space for dining. And if I take a turn over here, you can then see the galley down this side. So fridge is in this one, like so. Ooh, do like a double-decker. There's a freezer down that side, the usual bits and pieces of storage. Because someone here's got a sweet tooth. I think there's a oven in there, which you can swap out if you want for a microwave. And again, just lots more storage. And the rest of the cooking 
lives under the top of this sideboard. So during the day it's really neat, you can use it for storage space, but if you want to do a bit of cooking, lift that up, and then as you can see, gas hob, double gas hob, and a little stainless sink with a fold down tap. Audio visuals covered by the TV that pops up over there, and now we're inboard, you can see the effect of those massive glazing that runs the whole way around. All of these windows have individual blinds, so you can put the blinds down. And obviously at night, if you want to, you can close the light off by sliding the doors across, pull that curtain across. Now we mentioned earlier that this is the flybridge, which we'll have a look at at the moment. If it wasn't the flybridge, it was the sedan version, then a large proportion of this roof section becomes a sliding sunroof. One step up takes you to Helm station with a little companion seat alongside, which is really nice. And then you can see you've got access through to that side door. Double helm seats with pop-up bolsters, because bearing in mind this is a boat that's designed to go places even when the weather's not very nice. And a fairly conventional, as you can see here, dash layout. She's on Volvo Penta IPSs, so pretty standard throttle controllers and then the IPS drive there. You can have it on shaft drive if you wanted. And a nice bar there to put your feet down if you're navigating in rough weather or you're sitting down. And then Raymarie controller here and then the Volvo Penta engine control systems there. But what a great view out. It's almost like a widescreen cinematic TV. But we'll have a quick look at the engine say on the way out. So I think the three large steps takes you down to this really nice open companionway with a grab handle to help you down. And that wood effect follows you right the way down. And now we transition into carpet because we're in the the, the bedroom zone, if you like. First thing that meets you is the master cabin, which is, has a nice big centerline VIP double berth. And again, lots and lots of light. On the later generation, I think the Evolution gives you the extra hull windows that the previous versions didn't have. Lots of storage dotted across the top there. And again, now we're down in the cabin, you can see that big glazing panel that was in the superstructure we looked at earlier. You've also got deck windows as well, so you can open those for ventilation. Little TV. Nice, big, big hanging wardrobe there. And there's a matching one behind us, behind the door over there. Gosh, thick door, look at the size of that door. Woodwork on here is lovely, actually. So there is, there's, I think there's three choices, light or dark, depending on what you want. So take a step back. Over here we have the twin cabin, which is a slightly different layout to normal. You've almost got a double size single bed there, and then tucked under the rest of the superstructure here, we have a side single bed. But again, it still has access up the side. You've got um, illumination from outside, so you've got natural daylight. The way they've put these LED lights in really does make it incredibly bright. Charging station down there. There's a little nightstand down there as well. Slightly bigger window on this side. And again, opening port light above. I'm going to take a step back. There's then a big, 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 big wardrobe in here. Full of all the boat show clobber. You'll say they bought this boat over, I think, from Limington for the show. And they all share this heads over here. Really nice that it has a separate shower. So you can shower, keep all the water in the shower cubicle. Quite clever the way they've done it, that they've got the shower controller up there and then the rain soaker head up there. If I take a step in the shower, you can see another lovely big hull window with the opener and then conventional vanity unit as you'd expect and a practical little loo. Nice big mirror to help throw the light around the place. So that's downstairs or below deck. Let's go and have a peek upstairs and then we'll finish off in the engine bay. So it's quite a steep ladder, but bearing in mind the whole point is to maximise the fishing space or the deck space down below. Grab rails all the way up and then once you get up here, another grab rail to meet you at the top. Now this, I like this layout, it's really sociable design. So the helm station's moved right to the back of the boat. A couple of very purposeful looking helm chairs. Radar arch behind us here. And you can see actually while we're here, it's a little bit of a canvas cover to give you a bit more protection 
after the flybridge overhang. Very trimmed down helm station, but again, pretty standard layout. Throttle controllers, IPS controller, because this is on the IPS drives. And then you've got the GPS, rain marine system there. Engines, trim tabs, and a couple of carling switches for the horn and the anchor winch. But what's really nice is, if you've got people with you up here, they're all joining you upstairs. So really decent array of social seating there. Nice big open space. There's nothing stopping you putting a table in it if you needed to. And then just a quick peek over the bow to see that purposeful bow. And then we'll go and have a quick look at the engines. Bear with me while I climb down one-handed. Right, now we will have a quick peek in the engine bay. I had a small issue with the audio, so I had to revert to voiceover, so I do apologize for the sound balance. But as I mentioned earlier, the Rodman comes, um, as you can see here, on IPS drives, but alternatively, you can have it on shaft drives if you want. Either way, it's gonna be the same Volvo Penta D6 600 that you see here with just incredible access from a servicing perspective. So nice to be able to get easy access to these engines. So 36 knot max speed, 25 knots is gonna give you a really comfortable cruise. And at that speed, you're gonna get 280 nautical miles out of the tanks on board. There you go. So thanks to Rodman and the guys at RBS Marine. Do please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time around. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.